Today, today we're going to be figuring out how do, we, how do we multiply and divide rational expressions. How do we multiply and divide fractions? Take a look at problem number one. Five ninths times six fifteenths. Ashanti? Close, close. Whenever we, whenever we have fractions, Hannah, that's, I, that's with addition and subtraction. And so try and remember in, exactly. Try and remember this. Try and remember this. Addition and subtraction of fractions is really difficult. Really difficult. Multiplication and division is really easy. So how do you do these? Top times top. Bottom. Times bottom. <laughs> and that's what we do. That's the rule. So here we go, right? So the first thing we're going to do is just we're going to write it just like I've written it down below. 5 times 6 over 9 times 15 equals. And so there we go. There's our final answer. How do we get two ninths? Great question. Great question. Check this out. You could just plug that into your calculator, right? Whoops. 30 divided by 135. Math. All right. Now we're going to divide two fractions. Okay. Division is just like multiplication. There's just one extra step, right? Does anybody remember this from back in middle school? Great, great suggestion. Cross multiplication only takes place if this sign in the middle over here, if instead of a division sign, it's an equal sign. So close. You were just off by one symbol. Nope, division. Let me give you a hint. Keep, keep change flip. Yeah, the first step whenever you're dividing two fractions is that you got to keep the first one, you change the sign to multiplication, and you flip the second one. So keep, change, flip. Maybe we should write that down. Keep, change, flip. KCF. I love KCF. Love, K love KCF. And so now, you know, we do our normal thing. Top times top, bottom times bottom. All right, let me do it in. Let me do it in steps. Top times top, bottom times bottom. That equals eight times twenty-seven. It's plus. It's two sixteen. And the bottom's 48. And then could you reduce that for me? What is it? 2, 6, whoops. 9, 9. Okay, hold on. Let me just check and make sure so everybody can see it on the internet. 216 divided by 48 gives me that random number. Math. 9, 2. Or 9 halves. So what do you think? That's easy? Okay. Okay. All right. We're stepping it up a notch. What's the first step? Love, love that, love that company. Love that company. I'm getting hungry right now. Just thinking about it. Keep change flip. Keep change flip. Keep the first one. Change that symbol. Flip the second. And and you're gonna get some points for that. Oh, yeah. Uh-oh. Let's do the second part. Just like I've been doing it on the past couple of problems. Top times top, put them together. Bottom times bottom. Right? So 
it's 144. And the bottom is 36 to the second. Uh, to the third. Uh-oh. Oh, because there's, because there, why is there, why is it to the third? One, two, three. Because, because there's, there's two of them. And then there's like one more of them over here. So you got three of them all together. Another way that you could think of it is that, that the bottom really looks like this. We're just too lazy to write it down. One, two, three of them. See that? Okay. And so let's finally finish it off. Okay. Remember, we just got done doing this on our quiz. M over M to the third. Right? Yeah. And this becomes a squared. So there's only an M squared left in the bottom. Then how much does this reduce down to being? Okay. 36 goes into itself once, goes into 144 four times. So that the end is just 4 over 1m squared. That's it. Question number four. Question number four. What do we do? What's step one? Yeah. Top, top, bottom, bottom, because it's just multiplication. So that's 8x top. Yep, hold on a sec. 12 times 6. So top, top, bottom, bottom. So 8 times 4 is what? Mm -hmm. Then what do we do? Divide. 32 by 72. How many times does 32 go into 72? I don't know. Even I can't do that one in my head. So I'm going to break out my calculator, right? I'm going to check it out. Four nine. Four nine. Do you want to move up? Come back over here. Dan. Dan, come up to the front. All right, man. I got you on video now. I see you said you couldn't see. I said come up to the front. You're still wanting to stay in the back. Okay, brand, brand new. Brand, brand new problem. This is a little bit more difficult than the other ones, but still works out the same way. It's multiplication, so we do top times top, bottom times bottom. It's just not as easy as the other ones that we did. And it involves factoring. Okay, that's why we practiced that for our last test. So here's what we got. Now, whatever you do, don't actually multiply that 9 into there. You know what your next step is? Let me, yeah, let me, highlight, let me highlight the problem here. Right there, okay? Do you see this thing right here? Okay. You have to factor that. And what does this factor into being? Very nice. Yeah, that's A plus 2. A minus 2. Nope. You only cross multiply if you see an equal, like, although I put an equal sign right here, yeah, you, the only time you would cross multiply is if there was an equal sign right there. Okay. So we got A plus 2A minus 2 over 9, all over 3 times A plus 2. Okay. Now, ooh. Looks like we got a lot of stuff. Also looks like stuff that we did yesterday or did on our quiz, right? Do you see some things that might match? So let's reduce these before we multiply, because otherwise our multiplication can get really, really messy. Do you see anything else that could reduce? Very nice. The 9 will reduce down to being 3, and the 3 will become a 1. So look what we're left with in the end. We're left with a minus 2. We're left with a 3, and on the bottom we got 1. And that's the same thing as saying, right, we're going to distribute the 3 in, 3a minus 6. And that's our final answer. Is that hard? Yeah. Is that real hard? Okay. One more problem to do today before we assign homework and practice a little bit. It's a multiplication problem, so what do you do first? 
excellent. Top times top, bottom times bottom. Top times top, bottom. times bottom. Now, let me show you how you know you have to do this next step. First of all, do you see anything that matches? Not yet. Second of all, so, so you don't see anything that matches. Cross that off your list. Do you see anything separated by addition or subtraction? If you see stuff separated by addition or subtraction, it means you're going to have to factor. Oops. Let me, let me fix that. Just that one. Right? Because this one over here is already in its simplest form. What's 4x minus 12 in factored form? What's its... Is there a... What? Of 4 and 12? Very nice. Yeah. And that one's hard to pick out. 4 is the greatest common factor of 4 and 12. So let me just write this out. Now... 4 times what? What happens when we divide 4x by 4? Very nice. Yeah, it's x takes away 3. That's what gets filled in there. Let me also highlight something. So, do you see this right here? The stuff in yellow? The two things highlighted in yellow are equivalent. All I did was just rewrite 4x minus 12 in factored form. So I haven't changed the fraction. All I've done is written it down a little differently. Let's keep the other stuff on the bottom. So we got 5x squared, and we got x minus 3. So do you see anything that matches now? Very nice, yeah. These two cancel. Do you see anything else that might cancel? Yeah, the x's, right? This x, and I got two of them over here, so let's just leave one of them. So guess what my final answer is? Ooh. We still have this, and we still have this left over. 24 over 5x, because 4 times 6 is 24, and we got 5x left on the bottom. Final answer. That's our homework.